So I want to make a couple of things clear at the start of this video. Uh, once again, this video is going to trigger some people, but uh, this is 100% truth. Some people saying that in previous videos that, uh, you know, I'm just uh, bringing up a bunch of nonsense with no source to back it up whatsoever. So you can look this up, okay? This is from the uh, Wall Street Journal. So the Wall Street Journal asked uh, young people across America, young men and women, so voters uh, between the ages of 18 to 29, on their top concerns uh, for the upcoming election and uh, what is uh, their number one priority. So uh, I think this is actually uh, outrageous, absolutely outrageous. So here is the uh, top issues for voters. So there's the graph, right? You can find this, uh, this is from Wall Street Journal once again. So I'm gonna show you guys the two graphs on the screen. Take a look. So top issues for women and uh, top issues for men. Don't worry if I flash that too quick. Well, I've written everything down. So the number one issue for women, look at that. 22% of young women voted for abortion. Absolute shocker to me. Well, it's not really a shock. I think I kind of expected it, but still, it's a bit of a letdown. I would say it's a bit of a disappointment. Then uh, the economy comes in number two, but however, look at the gap, 15% gap, 6% immigration, and uh, I'm adding a couple of notes there. That includes probably migrants or illegal aliens because they're not really migrants and refugees. So 6% anti-right wing uh, ideology, 6% inflation, 4%. How interesting, democracy, less than 1% of women actually care about democracy. How crazy is that? But here's the thing, right? I'm sure you guys have seen all the videos that talks about the political divide between men and women. Yes, we're at the point where uh, men and women, especially young men and young women, we disagree on every single topic now. And uh, this is extremely important, right? And uh, you wanna talk about the movement of, uh, what do they call it, men going their own way, right? So uh, why do you think so many young men are choosing to uh, stay single, right? And their women are saying that uh, we choose to bear. Yeah, because uh, we hardly have any topic we agree on anymore. And uh, I've been at uh, university for the past four years plus now. And uh, I'm excited to tell you guys that I will be graduating on December 16th. But uh, yeah, I've certainly sat down and talked to uh, many, many of these uh, young university educated women. And also I was in college for two years. So in the past six years, I've talked to many of uh, these uh, young women. Almost uh, every single young woman that's at these uh, post-secondary institutions, Every single one of them a liberal. By the way, a liberal does not mean left, okay? But uh, that's for a separate video. But uh, it's absolutely insanity. I've brought up the topic, for example, what do you think of uh, wage gap, feminism? What do you think about uh, the patriarchy? What do you think about immigration? What do you think about uh, Christianity, Islam, Hindu, right? Uh, Buddhism, everything. We talk about various topics. Sometimes, uh, not specifically, right? It just sometimes you get put together in a random group for a group project. And sometimes uh, you just in your free time during class or between classes, you just have a little lunch chat and uh, what I found out was that uh, you know these young women they disagree with everything that uh, the young man has to say and uh, some many of these young women they don't even want to hear a man's opinion and uh, yeah obviously that is going to make dating marriage relationships a complete nightmare because uh, you know we're at the point the political divide is so insane and it's very obvious looking at this and uh, look at what is the top issue for men. And I'm serious, I know there are some women who watch my videos. Like, are you serious? You don't really care about the economy or inflation or democracy. Because look at the number one concern for men, 17% of young men, right? They said that the number one issue for them was the economy. And uh, I think, yeah, they have every right to be concerned, right? Because uh, you guys are about to graduate and you're about to enter a world that is going probably three, four, five times worse versus what your parents had, right? And you should be concerned. If you're at the point that uh, you can't even put food on the table and if you're at the, constantly at the point where you're $500 short for rent every month, your number one concern is abortion. If you're so concerned about abortion, then uh, let me tell you something, ladies. There are over 40, 40 methods of birth control. Sorry, did I put out five? Yeah, over 40 methods of uh, birth control that you can use. By the way, birth control is over 99% effective, right? You can tell the guy to wear a condom. Condom is 97% effective. Even if uh, you're not on birth control, even if the guy's not wearing condom, tell him to pull out. Even pulling out as the last resort, that is 80% effective. All of that aside, put all of that aside, right? If you still choose to have unprotected sex and you don't want to keep the baby, you don't want to bear the consequences, then uh, there's still plan B before you get to abortion. There's all of these stages. But uh, uh, even if you, let's say, you know, one night you got drunk and you had a one night stand, right? And uh, what are the chances of you getting pregnant from a one night stand? It only gets to the point of abortion, right? If you had unprotected sex, 
while you're not on birth control, at least I would say five, six, seven, eight times. And uh, at this point of the video, I need to make something clear. I am not a conservative, nor am I a liberal, okay? For my entire life, I've always considered myself to be politically non-binary, yes. Maybe that's the correct way to use this term. I don't lean to either side. I'm just telling you, I'm not against abortion because here's the thing. If uh, abortion were to be criminalized, it was made illegal, right? It would be more dangerous for women because it doesn't matter what laws uh, you pass in place. Let's say every single nation on earth, right? Let's say the United Nations passed the law, right? And to outlaw abortion to every single country, there's still going to be tens of millions of abortions worldwide every single year, but it's going to be more dangerous uh, for these women because uh, they're going to probably have to look for a shortcut they will have to look for illegitimate methods, whether they do it themselves or, or they'll find some a sketchy, a self-trained Indian doctor that's going to do it for them for a three, four, five thousand dollars. It's just going to turn a scam business. So uh, I'm not against abortion, but uh, here's what I will say. Really, you don't really care about economy, like your borders being invaded. At least, at least 10 million uh, illegal aliens has entered uh, the country into the United States in the past four years, but uh, you don't really care. So uh, right now in the United States, there are at least 25 million uh, illegals, right? How many of them are murderers, right? You think about, uh, you worry about uh, your neighborhood is not safe, you're worried about, uh, you know, just not being able to walk alone at night or even during the daytime. But uh, you voted for this, by the way, right? Back in 2020, 68% of all married women voted for Joe Biden and Kamala Harris. And it's their open border policies, 94 executive orders by Joe Biden. And that has led to this uh, total chaos. But, uh, you know, you think uh, the streets are neighborhoods are not safe but uh, you know you are allowing this open border policy and the anti-right wing ideology i don't know about this one but certainly you don't even care about inflation really ladies you don't even care about inflation or democracy honestly even the man i think democracy right for america this should be number one so in my own opinion but uh, look at this you know for the man's side, right? Number one, economy. Then you have uh, number two, democracy. 10% of men voted for democracy. Then immigration, refugees. Then uh, you have uh, inflation. Then abortion. Then last place. Yeah, I'm not a big fan of this anti-right wing ideology. But uh, that aside, okay? There's something uh, extremely, extremely dark behind this abortion thing. I don't think uh, many women actually realize this. By the way, I mentioned before, so China, obviously, everybody knows about uh, their... Uh, one child policy which lasted for 35 years do you guys uh, want to know uh how many abortions are done in america every single year so it's roughly uh 950,000 in america per year still high but it is dropping because uh, during the bush administration by the way that's a republican president i think america averaged anywhere between 1.3 to 1.5 billion abortions but uh you know despite everything is being said it is uh, actually going down which i think is a positive trend so uh during china's 35 uh, year uh, one child policy china performed roughly 300 million abortions so so roughly 9 million abortions per year many of my family members have gone to the abortion clinic and they had a process that's done okay this is how i know about this it's called right here dilation and extraction okay i'm going to give you guys a trigger warning things are going to get uh, quite uh, gruesome i'm going to describe the process i don't think i can show it due to youtube's community guidelines so here's the thing right when you usually when you get to the abortion right you, most cases you're past the, the stage of plan B because for most women, you don't even know you're pregnant usually uh, until at least two months, right? So uh, in many cases, let's say, uh, look at the fetus at three months old, okay? If it is 100% developed, right? You can say that it's just uh, the fetus is not a human being, it's not living. Well, every single pregnant woman, I'm sure can tell you this, every single mother out there can tell you that. You can obviously feel the baby moving around. You can feel the baby kicking your stomach, right? It is 100% living. Here's the thing. I want you guys to look up uh, how abortion is actually done. By the way, uh, you guys want to know the abortion capital of the world, right? And there's one of many things. I'm sorry to say if you're Indian, you're going to get triggered. You guys want to know uh, how many abortions a year India performs? 17 million. Yes. One, seven, six zeros. Okay. India, it is the abortion capital of the world. Even if you adjust it to, uh, in terms of uh, abortions per capita, that's why they have a huge excess man crisis. It's estimated that India has 70 million excess men. Almost all the abortions that's been done in India are being done on uh, baby infant girls. 
They have an obsession with killing young women in India. It is an absolute sick country. It's an absolute sick culture. That's why the rape epidemic has gotten so bad because uh, there are way more men than women. Now uh, India is exporting all these excess men overseas to other uh, Western countries. You have a huge issue in your country. A success and the failure of a nation has nothing to do with your ethnicity. It's 100% connected to your culture. And then you can look up the abortion crisis in India. 17 million abortions a year. Absolutely sick. I'll tell you guys how it's done. So, so I mentioned this before. So you get to uh, the abortion clinic. And uh, by the way, yeah, look at the fetus at three months old. Okay, it has a spine, has nerves. It is 100% alive, okay? That is a living human being inside of you, ladies. Once again, I'm not against abortion, but you need to know where you're getting into. So first of all, dilation. Your cervix is going to be dilated to 10 centimeters. How do I know this? My sister has done it. Okay, many of my aunts, many of my cousins, they've all done the same thing. They've done the dilation and extraction. Obviously, I didn't watch it, but I obviously searched out the process. Then the doctor is going to walk in with a pair of clamps. They're usually called sulfur clamps. And uh, what's gonna happen? The doctor is going to stick the clamp in. Once again, trigger warning. He's going to rip out first either the left or the right leg. So the clamp goes in, clamps onto the leg, and rips it out. And uh, there's going to be blood splashed everywhere. Usually this, there's a bucket underneath the uh, surgery table. Then after the, the first leg is either the left or right gets ripped off, and the, the doctor once again goes into your cervix, which is dilated to a 10 centimeters or roughly four inches. Then the second leg, either the left or the right leg, whichever one's remaining, gets pulled out. Then what happens? Then obviously the arms are next, right? The third incision's made, then either your left or your right arm is pulled out. Then it's being uh, squished through your dilated cervix. And once again, the doctor goes again for the fourth time. This time uh, your other arm gets pulled out. It gets squished through the cervix. And uh, what's left of the baby is just uh, your torso and your head, right? And uh, here's uh, where things get tricky because the torso is quite big. So this time the doctor is going to stick uh, this sulfur clamp inside for the fifth time. And the doctor is going to do some meat grinding. It's going to completely crush the baby's torso and it's going to get grinded up into many, many pieces. And the doctor has to take multiple, probably uh, four or five attempts just to pull out uh, the torso, which has been squashed into pieces. It's like a meat pie. And uh, once the torso has been squashed, here comes the hardest part, the baby's skull. Because uh, obviously it's way too big to be pulled out, even with a dilated cervix. So what does the doctor do? Once again, he sticks the sulfur clamps in, into the dilated cervix. And he has to do basically, it's like a salad toss. And he has to basically crush and crush and crush and grind and grind and grind until uh, the baby's head and the brain has been absolutely smashed into tiny pieces. And it probably takes another five or six uh, trips into the cervix and out of the cervix to pull out the remainder of the baby's head and the baby's brain. And uh, afterwards, do you guys wanna know what happens to, to uh, all the bits that has been uh, pulled out? It gets sold uh, to a black market. This is a huge business and it's very, very popular in India. And it is also very popular in Mexico, in Central America, and in South America as well. And uh, sometimes uh, these remains can go for a fortune. This is very, very dark stuff once again. I, it's, it doesn't matter you know, what laws each country is putting in. I understand it's going to happen anyways. But here's the thing. Is this what you really, really want, ladies? That is your number one concern. You don't care about the economy or immigration or inflation or democracy. All you care about is abortion. Here's the thing, right? If let's say you know I married a girl, a Chinese girl, we'll just say Chinese girl, and we're living in, let's say we're living in America since this is the Wall Street Journal. And uh, let's say I got her, my uh, girl pregnant, and obviously I want to keep a baby. And my girl is going to say, uh, you know what? I just don't feel like becoming a mother yet. And uh, she decides to, against my will, to go to the abortion clinic and she gets dilation and extraction. And uh, there's absolutely nothing I can do, right? However, however, here's the thing. If it was the other way around, if my girl really, really wants to keep the baby, then I say, you know what? Uh, no, 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 no. I, uh, I'm just not financially ready. It's too expensive to raise a baby. I need to focus on my career. I need to earn more money. And there are two things, right? Let's say before it gets to dilation and extraction, possibly when uh, I f first find out when my girl is pregnant, I can slip an abortion pill into her drink, right? She can take it and she will lose the fetus. Or uh, I can, let's say, sleep uh, some sleeping agent into her drink. She falls asleep, I call in a doctor and uh, we get this extraction uh, done at the hospital, right? In secret while she's passed out of sleep. Do you guys know what happens if I choose to do that? I'm charged with first degree murder. So yeah, 
If my girl chooses it, oh, good for you. Third wave feminism, crush the patriarchy. You girl, girl, woman's right, right? Uh, let's just destroy all men. We choose to bear, don't need no man. And uh, let's just uh, stay single and childless. So if woman does it, it's good for her, right? Everybody claps for her. If I choose uh, to get abortion done on my girl, I'm charged with first degree murder. I could be locked up in jail for life. It's not quite interesting. And uh, here's the other thing, right? It's not just, just me, right? So. I just wanted you guys to think about how actually uh, selfish this is. 22% of women who voted for this abortion. I can't say all women, but this is your number one concern, clearly. In this case, right, almost all the abortion laws, you know, I know it varies on each individual state. So only the mother, she has the right, right? So I, as the father of the child, I have absolutely zero say in anything. And in fact, let's say, you know, if I'm against keeping the baby, right? I say, you need to get an abortion. And she says that I'm keeping the baby. And she says that, you know what? I cannot stand you and you just really annoy me. Even though I'm pregnant, I'm going to have the baby, but I'm going to raise the baby by myself. I want you out of my baby's life. But uh, here's the thing. I have to pay child support and alimony for the next 18 years. Tough luck, right? It's nothing a man can do about it. And let's say, even if, uh, so, all four grandparents, even if all four of them were against the abortion, but she still wants to have, have the abortion done, then the, the grandparents have absolutely nothing to say. Even if it was her own mother, so the uh, maternal grandmother of the child, if uh, during her sleep, she slipped the uh, abortion pill into the mother's drink and she lost uh, the fetus, and she's going to be charged, the grandparents of the baby is going to be charged with first degree murder. How interesting is that? What I am uh, saying is that, uh, you know, that everybody that's involved, right, the four grandparents, Parents, the father of the child, the mother of the child, there has to be a consensus. At least uh, there needs to be a majority decision, right? There needs to be a vote. And I don't think it, it should be only be up to the mother, but uh, that's just the, how the law is made. And uh, I think it's an extremely, extremely selfish law. And do you guys want to know something interesting, right? The fact that, you know, man and woman, we disagree on everything now. And also just uh, why are women so obsessed with abortion? I'm going to bring up uh, the wage gap once again. I've talked about this so many times, but women will continue to argue. So let's say right now, so you and another classmate, one woman, one man, you guys are best friends. You're both uh, about uh, to graduate, uh, let's say New York University. You're living in the United States, right? You're both in your senior years. This is your final year. So in April of 2025, you will be graduating from, let's say, New York University, NYU. Extremely woke school, but uh, you know, pretty solid top tier school in America. And let's say you're both lucky enough uh, to be hired. Let's say you get a job, let's say uh, at uh, Wall Street, and uh, you guys both uh, work for the same company. Let's say you guys both become consultants at uh, Ernst & Young in the Midtown Manhattan. And I think a good starting wage, right? If you're living in Manhattan, it's very expensive. I think 60K US, it's pretty reasonable. Even, you know, for a New York standard, I, I, I think that's nothing, but that's a starting wage, right? Here comes the wage gap. Let's say, right, both of you, you and your best friend, one woman, one man, you both start at Ernst & Young as a consultant in uh, 2025. You're both making $60,000 a year to start. Five years down the road, what if, what if this man kept working for the next five years nonstop, right? He's grinding away, he's working 50, 60, 70 hours a week, because uh, unless a man is able to provide financially, he he won't be able to find a woman that's going to marry him and that wants to have a child with him, right? It's very, very simple. Women will not marry men who make less money than them. That's the brutal reality. All a woman has to do is ovulate, but a man have to prove themselves, right? They have to be able to provide because the men who are cucks and betas, do you know what happens to those men throughout history? They become eunuchs where they die on the battlefield. They never, ever get the chance to procreate. So if this man works hard for the next five years, by 2030, this guy's going to be making, let's say, 120,000, right? What happens to the woman? So if a woman, let's say if she has a true uh, traditional conservative values, right? And she's got uh, this job that pays $60,000 a year, but she's saying that now I'm 23 years old, right? I have to start thinking about, uh, you know, I have a biological clock and I want to secure a high value man. So I need to, to find a man. I need to get married early and have children early. So uh, you get married in the year of uh, 2025 or 2026. Then for the next five years, you have three children. You take three maternity leaves. So in reality, you've only worked two years out of the five. Who do you think is going to be making more money? All right, that's where the wage gap comes from. That's it. And uh, people keep arguing about this point. I'm like, it's that simple.
So let, let's flip the camera. If, you know, she, let's say this woman at uh, 23, right? At her job at Ernst & Young, 23 years old. And if she got married and she had three children in the next five years. So three children in five years. Five years later in 2030, she has only worked two years. So that means her salary, instead of 120,000, she's probably going to be making around $75,000 a year. It's that simple. This man is making way more money than her because obviously this man, he has to prove himself. He has to be able to provide financially in order to find a wife, in order to continue his bloodline. So he's grinding away for the next five years, working 50, 60, 70 hours a week. Now, five years later, he's making $120,000 a year as a consultant. And this woman, she got married at 23. Absolutely nothing wrong with that. She took three maternity leaves. So she has only worked for two years out of the five. And five years later, she's making 75,000. No, really, really think about this. This is why so many women are obsessed, right? 22% women are obsessed with uh, their right to abortion because uh, one thing I do agree with, it does not make any sense for a woman to have a career who wants to climb the corporate ladder. As you can see in this uh, very, very simple example, having children and having a career at the same time, it's impossible. If you want a career, ladies, if you want to get to doctor, if you want to get to engineer, university professor, if you want to get your tenure, if you want to become a lawyer, if you want to climb the corporate ladder to make $200,000, $300,000 a year, it is almost impossible for you to stop and get married and have children. Having children will 100% sabotage your career opportunities and any chances of you climbing the corporate ladder. This is why this whole system, third wave feminism, it does not make any sense. This is why men must be the breadwinner. This is why you have to give all the top tier earning jobs to the men. Because as you can see, this system is not going to work. Because if all the women follow this model, it means that none of these women will want to have, get married or have children. It's because they know that to get married and having children is going to sabotage their career. So they would rather climb the corporate ladder they want to get their PhD. They want to make it to the top 1%. And uh, if you make it to the top 1%, you're going to die alone, okay? That's why, you know, in so many of these Asian countries, in Japan, in South Korea, in China, in Taiwan, the birth rate is collapsing. Same with all over Western countries, in Europe, in Canada, in Australia, in the United States, because uh, over the past four, five, six decades, we have a record number of women getting their degrees, record number of women getting their masters, getting their PhDs, they're entering the STEM field, they're entering they're becoming corporate executives, they're becoming lawyers, they're becoming doctors. And uh, what is the cost? All successful career women die alone. Because the only way to climb the corporate ladder is to never get married or have children. Okay, this is the ultimate conundrum. This is why women are so obsessed with abortion. Just one last note, single and childless cat moms. These women, usually I would say they're quite dangerous and they should not be trusted. You guys want to know why? Okay, there's a difference between, you know, when a man is in cell versus if a woman is in cell. Okay, these type of career women, they chose to end their bloodlines because at some point they could have been married at 23. They could have been the mother of two at the age of 26, but uh, they chose to give up on their children. They chose to give up on finding a husband in order to climb the corporate ladder. Why would they want to climb the corporate ladder right here? because they know that they can make 120,000, 150,000, $240,000 a year. They chose to end their bloodline. They chose to end their family because they want power and they want wealth. That's it. Now, I, I used to be a huge fan of Taylor Swift. I've been a fan of her since day one. I still remember when she released her first single because you know, we're roughly two and a half years apart. I remember Tim McGraw, that was her first single. I used to be a big fan of her earlier songs like uh, Teardrops on My Guitar, like Pictures to Burn, and obviously there's songs like uh, Romeo and Juliet. But I would say over the past, let's say five to seven years, I have 100% lost interest and respect for her. Taylor Swift, she's already 35. She's high risk pregnancy, and I highly doubt she will ever get married to have children children one day. She could if she wanted to, right? Taylor Swift, she could have been married at 22. She could have been married at 25. She could have been married at 30. Even now, if she wanted to settle down, find a husband and uh, have children, she still can have children. But uh, she is purposely choosing to not do that. She's purposely choosing to end her own bloodline. And the reason is very obvious. It's because she wants money and she wants fame. Because, you know, if she chose to get married at 23 and uh, became a mother of three at the age of 27, she would just completely fall off the charts, right? Nobody would really care about her anymore. 
So instead of、uh, choosing to become a mother, instead of choosing、uh, to become someone's wife, Taylor Swift instead she chose to chase her career instead. Well, yeah, she's extremely successful, right? She became a billionaire at the age of 34, something I'll never be able to do, right? And congrats to her. But、uh, guess what? She's going to die alone. She's going to be a single, childless cat mom because、uh, she gave up her family to chase power and to chase wealth. That's why.、Uh, You know, honestly, someone like、uh, Kamala Harris, right? She's 60 years old. I believe that、uh, these type of women should never ever be trusted because Kamala Harris, when she was younger, she could have been married at 20. She could have been married at 23 and 26 at 30. She chose to give up on the possibility of a future family for herself.、Uh, why? Obviously, because、uh, she wanted to climb the corporate and political power.、It、comes down to wealth. It comes down to fame. It comes down to money. So, yeah. This is、uh, the state we're in in、uh, 2024, and unfortunately, the political divide is only getting worse and worse and worse. So, to the men out there who are basically saying that the men that are going their own way, I、uh, I don't think I can disagree with you. Perhaps it's the right decision. I think that、uh, our world is coming to an end. It's not going to be、uh, ending via、uh, nuclear Armageddon. It's going to be this. It's going to be the extreme political divide between man and woman because we're at the point we can no longer agree on any topic at all. And、uh, I honestly don't know if there's any solutions to this. Cold outside, I'm alone.